Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixel Perfect. How you guys doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day and turning it into a beautiful one. Well, in this video, I'm going to share with you how to perfectly iron your shirt or any other fabric for that matter, nice and crisp with Photoshop. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you wish to download this photo and follow along, you already know what to do my friend. Check the links in the description. The very first thing which you're going to apply here is frequency separation. Now you should be able to download the free frequency separation action which is linked up in the description. By the way, if you want to learn more about frequency separation, there are a couple of videos which you can check up. Links in the description also right here in the card. Anyway, so let's go ahead, go to our actions. If you cannot find actions, simply go to window and make sure you click on actions. It should be right here. Once you download that action, it should be Pix frequency separation. If it's an 8-bit image, play the 8-bit. If it's 16, play 16. And if you don't want to spend time figuring out whether it's 8 or 16, just play FS Master. It has a conditional that figures out whether this image is 16 or 8 and accordingly just plays the corresponding action. So even if you just play FS Master, that's all you need to worry about. Now keep in mind, this frequency separation technique that comes with this action is very traditional. It uses the traditional Gaussian blur, which works in most of the cases. A lot of people use surface blur or mean, which can work in several different scenarios and might work even better in certain situations. I urge you to go ahead and experiment with them as well. I'm using Gaussian blur here because it's more traditional and it just works on most of the cases. All you gotta do is to just zoom in and decrease the radius all the way to the left hand side and slowly and gradually increase the radius until the texture that you want to keep goes away. In this case, the texture that we want to keep is the texture of the fabric, but we do not want to keep the texture of all of these wrinkles. So we have to find a sweet spot where the texture of the fabric goes away, but the texture of the wrinkle stays so that we can work with the wrinkles separately and keep the texture intact. Now, slowly and gradually increase it. In this case, I would go with something like eight. At eight, most of it kind of goes away. Hit okay. And from here, it does the rest. Now you have a frequency separation group. If you turn it off and on, it should be the same thing. However, if you open it, you will notice that the image has been divided into high frequency and low frequency. You can also call it texture and color because high frequency mostly has texture and low frequency has color. So all we need to do is to keep the texture intact by keeping the high frequency just how it is. And just below it, we can either try to blur it or just paint over it to remove these wrinkles. Now there are two techniques from here to go about this and none of these techniques are wrong. If you have less time, you can use this Gaussian blur technique. So all you got to do in this technique is just make a copy of the low frequency layer just for backup. Press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate. Now in this copy, you can select the lasso tool. Make sure you have a lot of feather here because if you have feather zero and you try to select an area and do something to it, you will see the edges. Have a look this would be the selection visually. However, if you add some feather, for example, let's press Ctrl or Command D to deselect that. Let's add a feather of 20 pixels. Now when you make a selection, have a look at it visually. I've just pressed Q by the way for quick selection mode so that I can see what's happening. Have a look how soft the selection is. I pressed Q again. Press Ctrl or Command D to deselect. That's why I recommend having some feather. It can be 15, 20, 25, depending upon the resolution of the image and the size of the shirt that there is. Now, this is how the first technique goes. You need to make a selection of an area, which is similar in color, and then simply go to filter, blur, and then Gaussian blur. And blur out the creases. As you go ahead and increase the blur, have a look. They just go away. Try not to go too extreme, otherwise it will be absolutely flat. So you can have somewhere around probably 36. Hit OK. Press Ctrl or Command D. Now you know 36 works for most of the cases in this case of the shirt. So all you need to do from now on is just make a selection, press Alt Ctrl F. Have a look, if we go to the filter, see the last filter can be applied with this shortcut, Alt Ctrl F on Windows, which is simply Command Option F on Mac. All right, Alt Ctrl F, it's done. Similarly right here, you can just Alt Control F, it's done. So you can keep on just working and blurring different areas and it is that fast. So this is the fast technique, but the only problem with this technique is you will simply get less quality. That's all because you're giving less time here. So for example, if you just select this area, Alt Control F, all right. Now, things look nice, but if you zoom out, it also looks nice, but still we do have that crease right here. What if you wanted to remove that? We have to start 
painting over it. And that brings us to our next technique. Either way, it is not bad. We can absolutely work with it. But if you have more time and want a little higher quality result, let's move on to the second technique, which is using a mixer brush. Let's delete this low frequency copy and make another copy of low frequency. Press Ctrl or Command J and let's name this low frequency mixer brush. Take the mixer brush, not the regular one. If you just click and hold, you will find that there's this brush called mixer brush, brush with a droplet. Let's go ahead and select that and keep the default values. That's more than enough. If you don't have the default values, set them accordingly, or you can just click on this arrow, click on this gear, and just simply reset the tool. That's all, it will be set to default values. Now, we don't want smoothing of the brush, or when we make a stroke, Photoshop tries to make it smoother. It kind of makes it a little laggy, so we don't want any of that. The only setting we're gonna play with here is the flow. So let's decrease the flow to about 10%. You can keep it even lower. Just so that the fabric texture doesn't disturb us, let's turn off the high frequency layer. Now zoom out and simply work on these. And the way to work on these is pretty simple. Once you have this selected, make sure you have selected a soft round brush and then simply take a sample by holding the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample and then just paint. That's all. It tries to match and mix with the existing colors as well. Doesn't make sense? No problem. Let's increase the flow and now it will make sense. So if I take a sample of this color, this will try to mix and match with the existing color right here. See? See? It's trying to kind of match with whatever there is, but it also dips the brush in the color that you just picked. That's how it works. You don't have to worry about this so much. For right now, let's go back. Let's decrease the flow to about 10%. Just take a sample and start painting. Just one very important thing to keep in mind. Remove the wrinkles, but please do keep the natural folds. He's not wearing a hard cardboard right here. It's a fabric. Let's get working and I'm gonna fast forward this process. Quick note if your sampling isn't working right, make sure you go to the eyedropper tool, make sure sample current and below is selected and then just start sampling by holding the alt key or the option key and click on any area to sample that color. Now that all the mixing is done, have a look. We have removed all of the wrinkles from the low frequency mixer brush layer. I misspelled it. But at the same time, we have kept all of these natural folds, which would not have been possible with as much quality with Gaussian blur as you might have guessed it. So after this is done, let's turn on the high frequency layer. And as you can see, this is a drastic difference, isn't it? So here's the before, here, is the after. That definitely is a night and day difference. But we are not done yet because still if you zoom in, there are some creases here and there. We have to get rid of that. And if you look closely and if we turn off the high frequency layer, it is gone. It just means that it is just not there in the low frequency layer. It is in the high frequency layer. So the only way to get rid of them is working with the high frequency layer. Now before we start working, always have a backup. So with the high frequency layer selected, press Ctrl or Command J. This is just a copy. Let's turn it off. That's only for backup. Let's come back to high frequency. And now you can use the healing brush tool. You can use the clone tool. You can use the patch tool. Absolutely up to you. Just make sure whatever tool you're using. For example, if you're using the patch tool, you don't have to worry. It only works with the current layer. However, if you're working with the healing brush tool, make sure the sample is 
current layer only. If it's current and below, and if you sample and if you try to paint, weird things are gonna happen because it will also sample the other layers. We don't want that. We only wanna stay in that gray layer. All right, makes sense. So if you're using any of these, like healing, spot healing, make sure you uncheck sample all layers or if there's an option, choose current layer. Now, things will easily work, all right? Even if you're using the clone stem tool, make sure the sample is current layer only. In this case, I kind of find it easy to use the patch tool, but you can also use the healing brush tool. That's absolutely up to you. So let's use the healing brush tool first. Make sure sample is current layer and hold the Alt key or the Option key, click to take a sample from a nearby area and just fill that area up. There you go. That's also a good tool. But patch tool here, just in this case, is probably a little easier to work with. For example, I made a selection. I can just drag it to an area that fits the best. For example, just this area. And there you go. That line is gone. Similarly, let's do the other areas. Now, as you're working with the patch tool, make sure source is selected and also patch is normal. So finally, this is done. You wanna take a look at the before and after. So first of all, let's collapse the group. Here is the before and here is the after. Isn't that absolutely fantastic? Now, is it done? Yes, you can probably stop right here. But if you want more crispiness, after this, you can add one more step and that is liquify. So press Control, Alt, Shift, and E, Command, Option, Shift, and E on a Mac. This creates a stamp visible layer. Now, once you have that stamp visible layer, you can just name it liquify and convert it into a smart object by going to filter and then convert for smart filters so that you can change the values of liquify later. You can always get back to it and move things around here and there. And let's go to filter and then liquify. You really don't need this, but if you want it to be extra perfect, this is something that you can consider. For example, have a look at this line. It's not very straight. I'm not asking you to make it completely straight, but we can improve this. With the forward warp tool, make sure the pressure is low first and slowly and gradually nudge it like this. So you can make this a little more straight and all of these bends here and there, we can easily reduce that. You can work on it as much as you like. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to show you the before and after, but for right now, just that area. Want to have a look? So here is the before. The lines are very squiggly, right? And here is the after. Major improvement. You can do the same for all of these areas. So here's the final before and here is the after with Liquify. So that's how to perfectly iron a shirt or any other fabric in Photoshop. This will also work perfectly with things like curtains or backdrops or any other fabric out there. This will keep up the folds keep up the texture, but also remove the wrinkles. Now, just a quick little recap. First of all, we will apply frequency separation. Then we have to remove the wrinkles first from the low frequency layer. If you open this up, have a look. Now, there are a couple ways to remove it. You can either use the Gaussian blur method where you just select an area and blur it. And that takes very less time, but doesn't give you as much of a natural high quality result. If you do have more time in hand, you can use the mixer brush technique. In this case, you just take the mixer brush, take a sample and start painting. But as you paint, do keep in mind that you remove the wrinkles, but at the same time, maintain the natural folds. Again, he's not wearing a hard cardboard here. It has to have some natural folds. After we have worked with the low frequency, it's time for us to work with the high frequency because there can be creases, little lines here and there, which we would want to remove. So simply turn on the high frequency layer. You can make a backup if you wish to and make sure while you're working with the patch tool or the healing brush or the clone, make sure you're working only with the current layer and simply remove them with the tool of your choice. And it is pretty much done. After that, if you want that really perfect crisp result where everything is just in place, well, you can just apply a little bit of Liquify. And I just did it in this place, but it can make a major difference. 
So that's all there is to it. I hope this video helped you and if it did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. I would like to take this moment to thank all these nice and amazing people for supporting Piximperfect on Patreon and helping keep Piximperfect free for everybody forever. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Until then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.